Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have all new Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs to share with you all today. This is my absolute favorite video that I have ever filmed. I love all of these DIYs and I think that you guys are going to love them too. But before we get started, if you are new here, I would love for you to join us by subscribing down below and make sure to turn on that notification bell. So I found this spider dish at the Dollar Tree and I just wanna take a second to appreciate the size of it. Look at it compared to my hand. It is very substantial. And this was my first time seeing this dish. I think it is so pretty as is, but we're gonna make it even more beautiful. But it has a really nice shape to it. It has a bit of a 3D effect and the body has that faceted, almost like a diamond appearance to it. Really pretty. So they come in these two colors. I'm going to be saving one just like this for my Halloween party. But for the second one, I wanted to turn it into a DIY and we are going to be using this gold spray paint. This one is from Mustoleum. It is, in my opinion, the absolute best gold spray paint you can buy. It has such a gorgeous finish. So I just took this outside. I did one coat on the top. I let that dry. I flipped it over and I did a coat on the bottom and that was it. Very simple DIY, but this looks so beautiful. It has such a high-end look to it, especially with those little facets in the body. I just have it here being used as a trinket tray, but you can really use it for anything. So our next DIY here, we are going to be making a self-standing 3D light-up haunted house. So I'm starting off with these two wood cutouts of the haunted houses from Dollar Tree, and I'm also going to be using a pack of the tumbling tower blocks. So we're going to need 45 of those today, and that is the larger 72 pack. So I'm going to start off by prepping my wood cutouts here. To do that, I just removed the string that was in the top, and you can skip this step, but I didn't want to see that hole, so I'm just going to be filling it in with some lightweight spackle that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. You can just use your finger to just put a little bit into those holes, let it dry completely, and then I just took a sanding block and just buffed it flat on the front and the back. Once your houses are sanded flat, they are going to be nice and prepped. And now I'm just going to be taking 45 of those blocks. That is the exact number that works for this craft. And you can hand paint these, of course, but since there were so many small blocks, I figured that some spray paint would probably be the quickest and easiest option. So I'm just going to go in with this semi-gloss black spray paint from Rust-Oleum. So I just flipped them all flat. I did one coat just like this. And then I flipped them over when they were dry and I painted the backs of the blocks as well as the back of the haunted houses. Here is everything nice and dry with one coat of that spray paint and you can see here I did the front and the backs of the blocks. I didn't get all the sides but most of those are going to be covered up anyway. So now we're going to start on the base portion of this house and to do this you want to hot glue 11 of these blocks together. This is going to be the base of your house and 11 blocks works perfectly for this length of the house. So I just put some glue on the side there and I'm just going to be pushing one of my houses into it and I'm just going to hold it there for a couple seconds until it dries and then I'm going to be hot gluing my second house to the other side. Now that our haunted house has a floor, we are going to be giving it some walls on the side. And to do this, I took one of those blocks and I just put some hot glue and I started to glue them together just like this. And the perfect length for the sides of the house is 13 blocks. So I'm going to have 13 on one side and then 13 on the other. Here is my one side all glued together. And now I'm just going to be putting a little bit of hot glue on the sides and then I'm just going to be wedging it in right on the side here. It's kind of easier to see than it is to explain, but just a little bit of hot glue and it will hold in place really nicely. And then you can kind of just squeeze it together and let that dry for a couple seconds. So now we have one side done and then I just repeated that same process for the other side by gluing 13 of those blocks together and then I just glued it in place. The house itself is pretty much finished here, so you could just leave it as is, but I wanted to go a step further and add a front porch to my haunted house. 
I knew I had some decorations that I wanted to add to it, so this seemed like a good option. So I just took eight blocks and I glued two of them together. And then once I had four sets of two, I just glued those into a row. You could hot glue this porch to the actual house if you wanted to make it one solid piece, but I wanted the option of being able to have a porch or take it away. So I decided not to glue it to my house. And now I'm just going to be taking some of the mini hay bales from the Dollar Tree and some of their mini plush pumpkins and just hot gluing them onto my porch just to give it a little bit of decoration. These mini hay bales get me every time I see them. They are just so adorable and I knew that they would look really cute by this haunted house. Here is my little front porch all done. And like I said before, I'm just going to be placing it in front of my haunted house when I put it on display instead of actually hot gluing it to the haunted house. And now to make our house light up, I'm going to be using some of these fairy lights from the Dollar Tree. So I found these in their floral department and they do not come with batteries, but once you insert two batteries, they have such a beautiful glow to them and it's a really nice length. So I just pop them right into the middle of our haunted house to light it up. And I have to say, I love how this one turned out. Here it is with the lights dimmed a little bit and it really is so beautiful. Next up, we are making a pillow. So I'm going to be using these felt shapes that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and they are in the shape of a bat. I also picked up some black yarn from the Dollar Tree. They've had a really nice yarn selection lately, so I'm definitely loving that. And I also got two of Dollar Tree's bath mats. So you guys have probably seen me before. I love to make a bath mat pillow on this channel. I've made a couple different ones for different holidays, but I've never done a Halloween one. So I was very excited for this DIY. You just want to make sure that you are getting the soft bath mat from the Dollar Tree. I've been seeing a different variety there lately that is a bit stiffer. This one is very soft. You can bend it and fold it very easily. So make sure you pick up these ones if you see them at the Dollar Tree. So now I just wanted to prep my bath mats. So to do that, I do run mine through my washer and dryer just to make sure that they are nice and clean. And then I just take the tags off and if there's any loose straggly bits, you can usually just pull them out very easily. So you'll see here that the bottom of the bath mat is actually going to be the outside of the pillow. So now I'm just taking five of those bats from the felt pack and I'm just kind of playing around with them, figuring out how I want them to lay on my pillow. I ended up with a flying bat pattern and I'm going to be attaching them to my bath mat with some Gorilla Glue. So you could sew these, but honestly, the hot glue works really well on this bath mat fabric. So I just took some of my hot glue, placed it around the edge of my bat, and just glued it into place. Since this pillow is just for decor use, I don't have to worry about those bats coming off in the washing machine. So once all of my bats were glued down, I started working on my tassels. So I'm going to be making four tassels from the yarn from the Dollar Tree. So to do this, you just want to wrap the yarn around your four fingers. The more times you wrap it around, the thicker your tassel will be. And once I was pretty happy with the size, I just cut a piece of yarn off from the yarn ball and I'm just going to be tying it into a series of knots. So I do about three or four knots and now I'm just going to be cutting directly across from where I made the knot. So those two string pieces on the top that you made the knot with, you don't wanna lose those. We need those two to attach it to the pillow. But now we have to create the head of the tassel. So to do this, I just cut a long piece of twine and I'm just going to be wrapping it around a bunch of times. When I come to the end of it, I'm just going to tie in a knot and trim off any extra pieces. Once the head of the tassel was secured, I just pulled those lower strands nice and straight and then gave it a trim to make sure everything was even. 
tassels are very simple to make once you get the hang of it and then you can make them very quickly. So I just repeated that same process three more times and now I'm going to be attaching my tassels inside my pillow. So you'll see here the fuzzy part of the mat is facing inward. So I'm just going to be removing my top portion for now and working with the back portion. So I'm just going to get started by gluing my tassels in place. I just put some hot glue in the corner of the bath mat and I just use those two top strings to glue it into place. Now that all four tassels are glued down, I'm going to get started assembling the pillow. So to do this, I just put some hot glue along the edge and I'm just going to be pushing the two bath mats together. You can definitely sew this, but hot glue works so well on this bath mat fabric. It really gives it a super strong hold. I'm tugging at it here and it is definitely not opening at all. There are no gaps. It works really well. I glued all four sides, but I did leave a small opening on the bottom just so I could fill it with polyfill. I'll leave a link down below where I get my polyfill for pretty cheap. I like to get it in really big packages. And now once my pillow was all stuffed, I just hot glued it closed. Here is the final result. I love this one. I think the flying bats are just so elegant and those tassels just really help give it a high-end look. For this next DIY, we are going to be bringing back that gold spray paint that we used earlier. So I picked up this $1 skull at the Dollar Tree. They have these every year and I kind of just overlook them. But I had an idea that if I used the gold spray paint, it might really elevate the look of it. So I just did one coat on the front and the bottom. And I have to say, it definitely transformed this skull. It does not look like a Dollar Tree skull at all anymore. I was just really impressed with the way this one turned out. So for this next one, we are going to be doing some faux bug taxidermy. So stick with me here, even if you don't like bugs, because I think you might like the end result on this one. So I'm going to be starting off with four bugs that I picked up in the toy section of the Dollar Tree. You can of course use any bugs you have, they will work great for this, but these were the four that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And then I also picked up four of their wood plaques from their crafter square. They had a bunch of different shapes in these plaques, but these are the four that I went with today. So you guessed it, we're bringing back the gold spray paint one more time. And I'm just going to be giving these bugs one coat of that gold spray paint to completely change the look of them. But before I do that, I'm going to be painting my plaques and just prepping them. So this chalkboard paint I actually picked up at the Dollar Tree, but any black paint would work for this. And I'm just going to go ahead and give everything one quick coat with that black paint. While my plaques are drying, I just took my bugs outside and gave them all one coat of the gold spray paint. And this is how the plaques looked when they were all dry. That chalk paint does give it a really nice matte appearance. And now you just have to pick which plaque you want to attach to which bug. This bug was my favorite. I thought the beetle was so pretty. Definitely reminds me of Beetleborgs. Does anyone else remember that show from the 90s? It was one of my favorites. To attach these, I'm just going to be using my hot glue gun. So you can just flip over the bug, put a little bit of hot glue right into the center, and then just hold it onto your plaque for a couple seconds until it is nice and secure. Even if you are not a bug person, you have to admit that these look pretty cool. They definitely still have a Halloween feel to them because they definitely are a little bit spooky, but they are still very elegant and high-end looking. To attach these to the wall, the best method in my opinion is to use some of this Velcro command hooks. So you just have to Velcro them together and then you can just rip them apart. And by doing this, you just secure one to the back of the plaque and then the other one to the wall and it can just Velcro right into place and you will not see any hooks or nails or nothing like that. And it just gives it a nice clean appearance. So for this next DIY, we are going to be making a really pretty garland. 
So to do this, I'm starting off with one of these strands from the Dollar Tree. This is some of their wood beads. I know these can be a little bit hard to find, but I'm going to have some other options for you guys in the description box. So in addition to the wood beads, I'm also going to be using some twine from Dollar Tree and more of those felt shaped pads that we used earlier from the pillows. Any wood beads would work for this DIY. These are just some extra ones that I had. I'm not gonna be using these today cause I did wanna keep it all Dollar Tree, but these are just from Amazon. I have a link to these down below as well as some smaller beads. I always have these ones on hand for my wood bead garlands, but any wood bead would work for this. So I'm just gonna get started by prepping my bats. So depending on how long you want your garland to be, that will kind of just determine how many bats you'll need to prep. So for my garland, it is going to be pretty small because the area I am going to be displaying it is not very large. So I only had to prep three bats for this. And to prep them, I'm just taking a hole punch and just putting a hole on each side of the bat's wings. Now, since I'm making a banner, I just like to make little loops on the edges just to make it really easy to hang it up. So I just fold the edge right over itself and then pull it through to make a nice little knot. And now I'm just going to be trimming off this little extra piece here. And next, I'm just going to be cutting my rope to the length that I need it to be. So a good rule of thumb for this is to measure out how long you want your garland to be. And then I like to give it about 6 to 12 inches of slack because you can always trim it at the end, but if it's too small, then you're gonna have to start over again. So I always like to be a little bit generous with my length. And now just to make the beading process super easy, I like to take a piece of painter's tape and just put it on the edge of the twine. I cut it into a point and this just saves me so much aggravation because the twine can start to unravel a little bit or fray. So this just makes the process much easier. So for my banner, I went with 15 wood beads and then I just put the twine right through the bat's wings. So when you're putting it through, just make sure that that twine is going to be on the back of the bat. And then once I had my bat in place, I just followed that with another 15 wood beads and then just followed the same pattern until I had all three bats on. And now to finish it off, I'm just going to be creating that loop knot again. So I'm just folding it over itself, pulling it through, and then just trimming off any extra twine that I had left over. And that is it. I think that this one is so precious. Definitely very understated, but still has that Halloween vibe to it. And mine is pretty small here, but you could make this as long as you like. And I think it would just look so beautiful, especially on a mantle or kind of anywhere. So that is it for today, you guys. I really hope that you guys love these. Like I said before, this is my favorite video that I have ever filmed. And I really hope that you guys like it. If you liked this video, you can subscribe to my channel by just clicking my picture right here. And be sure to check out this video for some more crafting fun. Thank you so much for watching.